What's up guys, this is teacher Jonathan once again, and I would like to welcome you all in our today's presentation about unicellular organisms, okay? So, once again, welcome and uh, enjoy this video. So, let's talk about the cells first, okay, and some uh, basic information, some fundamentals. So we already know that cells are the basic building blocks of all living things or organisms. And most cells are too small to be seen. So we, we need microscope to be able to see them. A cell is the smallest part of living thing that can carry out all the life processes. Okay, these tiny structures perform different jobs or functions to keep cells alive. Cells take in nutrients, the materials they need to live and grow. In this uh, video presentation, I'll be showing you the different uh, unicellular organisms and how they they move, how they eat, and uh, yeah, how they survive, even reproduce. They also get rid of waste materials they cannot use. Okay, so let's focus our attention to unicellular organisms. What are unicellular organisms? These are the organisms that uh, contain one cell only. Uni means one, cell or cellular means cells. Okay, examples are bacteria, uh, amoebas. Uh, for this video, I'll be showing you uh, euglena and amoeba. Right? They're a simple form of life, but they carry out the basic processes of life. What are those? Moving, finding food, growing, and even uh, reproducing. That means uh, making more organisms of their own kind. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, bacteria. Uh, look at this. Okay, bacteria are very large group of single cell organisms and they're even smaller than uh, plant cells and animal cells. So we are talking about bacteria, okay? And uh, I would like to show you one of the bacteria. This is Streptococcus humanae, all right? Um, uh, and in, uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how these bacteria uh, grow and reproduce through binary fission. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is in time lapse. The speed is uh, times 540. And uh, this type of bacteria, uh, Streptococcus humanae, is type of bacteria or bacterium that uh, can cause pneumonia, okay? That can cause pneumonia, okay? Let's take a look. Streptococcus humanae uh, in binary fission. Take a look at that. So from one cell, uh, it will become two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, and then so on and so forth. This is what we call binary fusion. And take a look at that. How take a look how they uh, how did uh, this uh, bacterium invade our lungs, and this uh, could cause uh, pneumonia. Look at that. All right, uh, and um, we're gonna have to be very careful of catching one because it could uh, colonize the entire organ of our respiratory system, all right? Next is amoeba, all right? So this is the amoeba. And uh, in this uh, picture, I think amoeba is on, uh, on the process of eating paramecium. Okay, I will show you the video later on. So it's by surrounding a food particle and then bringing the food into the cell. Okay, it moves by changing its shapes. Okay, 
and that is possible by the movement of the cytoplasm. In this next video, I'll be showing you how amoeba eats paramecia, paramecium. Uh, I'll be showing you how amoeba moves and eat. Let's take a look at this. All right, so uh, this is magnified uh, 400 times and the speed is uh, two times. And then this is the amoeba right here, okay? Uh, and uh, it's uh, going to move, it will be called uh, endocytosis. Take a look, this is the paramecium right here. And all these uh, are the paramecium moving around. And uh, take a look how uh, the amoeba, look at that, look at that. Uh, amoeba is uh, not uh, that fast, not that quick, but uh, amoeba knows how to trap potential food, okay, by moving its uh, cytoplasm, we call this endocytosis, and uh, by trapping it, um, they could uh, find food, okay, look at that, and that's a uh, good lunch, yay! And you can see the movement of the cytoplasm right here, right? All that endocytosis. Here we go. Now this uh, paramecium here is being trapped and uh, being eaten. Next is euglena. This is the euglena, and uh, in this picture. You could be able to see this, and uh, there is a flagella or flagellum. There are actually two. All right, so this is Iglina, a single celled organism with a whip like part that can move it forward. So this is the fla flagella, flagellum. All right, and uh, in this next video, you, you'll, you'll be able to see how the Iglina squeezes its. Um, cytoplasm and uh, move or moves its uh, flagellum or flagella. All right, in this next video, I'll be showing you how Eugelina utilizes its flagella and uh, the cytoplasm movement uh, for locomotion. Locomotion means uh, movement. Okay, let's take a look at this. So this is the euglena, and uh, as you can see, there is a movement in the cytoplasm. And the movement of the flagella, these are all the flagella, look at that. They move uh, gracefully, really beautiful, right? Now you can see the movement of the flagella right here. Next is paramecium. Okay, so paramecium look like this. Uh, has many hair-like structure. We call it cilia to help it move and take in food. So the cilia actually paddles the entire structure for the movement. It's large enough to see if your Eyes. Paramecia swim happily in ponds and streams throughout the world. Their quick movements are produced by an army of hair like orbs that beat to the rhythm of intracellular chemistry. Called cilia, the tiny parts of the purpose create water currents that bring a constant supply of gifts in the form of bacteria and other oil matter. Entry into Paramecium begins in the oral groove, which leads to a bustling chamber called the food bag. An unsuspecting bacterium might frolic for a while in this churning chamber, but its days are numbered, correction, its minutes are numbered. For the Paramecium greets its visitors with a team of molecular adaptations that can only be described as precision instruments of death. Otherwise known as digestive proteins, they act on the residents of the food bag with stealing determination. Chomping and munching, snipping and cutting, the 
animals in this bounty is rendered lifeless. A food vacuum turns living cells into a thick blob of non-living nutrients. Transport proteins shuttle the essential molecules across the bacterial membrane into an ocean of cytoplasm. Other kinds of proteins group the nutrients for a thousand purposes, from energy production to building projects. The machinery within Paramecia operates at a feverish pace. Contractile vacuums pump the Paramecium away from certain doom, an explosive thing due to the invasion of water molecules. Designed by natural selection, its protein parts efficiently carry out all new chemical reactions. Out of countless random encounters throughout the vastness of the cytoplasm, the Paramecium's life emerges into existence. But just as quickly as Paramecia transform bacteria into construction supplies, so too might Paramecia suffer the same fate, thanks to the cold pseudopods of the Uva. Perhaps they ponder the irony of digesting tiny victims while they themselves are being digested. More than one, followed by many, many zeros, Paramecia have ended their time on Earth as a corpse within the dynamic molecular city that is Amoeba. When Paramecia's protein parts cease to function, the game of life is over. And so it is in the incessant war that constitutes nature. The living cells attack each other, engulf, destroy, and build anew. Organism is that we cannot harness the power of the sun. So Christ is the loss of life. So, Aramesha and most bacteria must take it food, but some single celled organisms like uh, Euglena use sunlight to make food. Their single celled organisms um, uh, remove wastes by moving them to the outside of the cells. And they reproduce by splitting into two cells, just like the one that we see in a Streptococcus humane. Right, we call it binary fission. Okay, uh, I hope you find this video helpful and that uh, it gives you um, confident in your own, your own future science classes. Okay, have a good day, everyone. Bye.